One of the tests of the success of a mission is not the crowds that come. It is rather, are there little children in the audience? And there were young ones scattered about the altar yesterday and here this morning again. And then one of the children, imagine, got up at two o'clock this morning and made for me some raisin bread. Greater love than this no woman hath, that she should arise at two o'clock in the morning to make raisin bread. Now you heard the story of Jonah, both in the epistle and in the gospel, first and second reading. You did not get the whole story of Jonah. Now I'm going to tell you the story of Jonah, and then I will give you the lesson from it. Jonah is listed as one of the twelve minor prophets. and. God sent him to the wicked city of Nineveh. Well, Jonah was a Jew. God to him was not the God of the Gentiles. Why should he go to pagan people? So Jonah took a boat to Spain. That probably was the Tarshish that is mentioned in the gospel, in the prophet. And on the way, a storm arose. And it is interesting that as you read that story of Job, now read it in your Bible. It's only about two or three pages long. It's the shortest book in the scripture. And you often find God made a storm to arise. And God sent a fish into the sea and so forth. And God arranged that the Jonah should be swallowed up. Well, a storm came up. And the sailors, for the most part, were pagan sailors and rather superstitious. So they took lots. Maybe they got, got long and short straws. And everybody on board the boat had to draw a straw. And the one with the shortest straw, say, was the one who was guilty of the storm. Well, Jonah got the short straw. And he said, yes, he said, God told me to go and preach to the Gentiles, but I refused. And I'm the cause of this storm. Remember, the failure of one can be the cause of the failure of many, as the salvation of one can be the cause of the salvation of many. For example, one man stole a Babylonian coat in the Old Testament, and Joshua lost a battle on account of it. God said, it was on account of that man that you lost the battle. So Jonah's tossed into the sea, and then he's swallowed by a big fish. It is not actually a whale that is mentioned, but at any rate, a big fish. I know of a teacher who was asking the boys after the story of Jonah, what lesson do you get from the story of Jonah? And the little boy said, I get the lesson that people make whales sick. <laughs> so Jonah is swallowed by a big fish. I was lecturing at the University of California last year, and at the end of the lecture I was asked questions, and one student said, how was Jonah in the belly of the whale for three days? I said, I haven't the vaguest idea. But when I get to heaven, I shall ask Jonah. He said, suppose Jonah isn't there. I said, then you ask him. <laughs> so you, you have the prayer of Jonah in the belly of the whale. And then the whale spews him out on the land, and 
Again, God gives her the order, go and preach penance to the city of Nineveh. Now that's the story that was read to you, as preaching of penance, and the king ordered it. But the very interesting part of the story of, story of Jonah is left out. Jonah wanted the people to be destroyed. You see, God said, I will destroy them if they do not do penance. Well, Jonah was afraid they would do penance, and then he would be accused of being a false prophet. And so Jonah went on a hill. He was bald-headed. And he went on a hill overlooking the city of Nineveh. And the sun just scorched his bald head. And there was a little plant that began to grow, maybe a gourd, with a big leaf. And it shadowed the head of Jonah. And he was calm, peaceful, and cool. And then a little worm came and ate the plant. And then Jonah began to scorch again. And God said to him, you had nothing to do with that plant. And now when it withers away, you were angry. And God said, shall I not be mindful of the 120,000 people in Nineveh who know not their right hand from their left? And there are many cattle? Now, this is the story of Jonah, God's concern for the Gentile people, for the missions, really. But we find it in the New Testament. See, our Lord speaks about it. He said, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, so the Son of Man must be in the belly of the earth for three days. In other words, as our blessed Lord would be crucified and buried for three days and then rise from the dead, so in the past, Jonah had undergone his passion, his Good Friday, in the belly of the fish, and then comes again to life on the shore. This is what is known in Scripture as a type. Incidentally, that's the way catechism should be taught in Bible history, by types. Our young people should be told the story in the Old Testament and then told about how it was fulfilled by our blessed Lord in the New Testament. If you have two hours and a half, I'll give you an example of it. Our blessed Lord said to Nicodemus, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross. Now in the Old Testament, the Jews had disobeyed our Lord. They were bitten by serpents. God said to Moses, make a serpent of brass, hang it up on the crotch of a tree. And everyone who looks upon that brass serpent will be cured of snake bite. Now there's nothing in a looking at a brass serpent that's going to cure snake bite. Nothing. But it was a test of their faith. Would they obey God? And all who looked upon that serpent of brass were cured of the poisonous bite. Now our Lord comes along and says, I'm that serpent. This is one of the few instances in which the same word that is applied to evil is applied to good. Another is the lion. The devil is a lion. Our Lord is the Lion of Judah, meaning that when the Antichrist comes, he will act like Christ. So our blessed Lord now says, as Moses lifted up the serpent, so I'll be lifted up on the crotch of a tree. And as that brass serpent looked like the serpent that bit the Israelites, but had no poison in it, so our blessed Lord on the cross would look as if he were guilty of sin, full of the poison of human guilt.